Hi guys, welcome to Rossi Audio. Today we're gonna do a little review of the uh, Klipsch KG4. Uh, I got him over the weekend and I spent a couple of days yesterday and today um, testing them, playing them, and just fiddle around with them to see. These are fairly good sized, I have to say. They are on risers. Both of them came with the risers. Uh, the seller also included, um, I have the original grill here, but he also included one extra grill because apparently the other grill over here on the other one has a little rubbing mark on it, so he had ordered in an, another grill. So I got an um, extra grill and a pair of these. And um, what can I say about these? I know a lot of you guys will probably remember that I gave the Klipsch Hersey um, quite a bit of a bad review and a lot of people reacted to that but I don't care I'm just telling it the way I hear it and listening to music for speakers is a very very personal we all have our own opinions about stuff some like it some don't so I can only go by what I think and what I hear um, so how do these stack up to the Hurricanes that I had that I had back in the day and that I made a review of? Well, I want to say that the Hurricane is probably better in the tweeter and the upper mid-range area. A little bit more balanced and a little bit more refined. These are a little bit more harsh in the tweeter section and it's a little bit more screamy but the rest of it is, is, is fairly good I mean that's the only negative feedback that I can really give you right off the bat and the, of course that it has a 12 inch passive radiator on the back I have never been a big fan of passive radiators I believe that is um, cheating in a fake way uh, when I see passive radiators on, on tower speakers in the stores and stuff or listed online and you have like four six and a half inches and two or three of them are passive radiators that to me doesn't sit well so I've never been a fan of passive radiators however when I tested these it didn't have that typical passive radiator sound that a lot of them can have um, it, it, it works fairly well. It does. Did I like the sound? Well, except for a few parts here and there where I think they kind of missed the mark, like in the Twitter section, it can be kind of harsh and it can be hard and it can be, it can create listening fatigue over a, some period of time. Uh, so they could have probably gone a, a better route with a, maybe a better tweeter. The, the rest of it, the woofers in the front and the, the passive one in the back, I think they worked fairly well together. And um, the transitioning between the drivers and the crossover points are fairly good. Um, overall sound is what it comes down to. Because I'm not listening to just one spot or a certain frequency range. To me, music is as low as the music is recorded and as high as it is recorded. I want my speakers to re reproduce the sound that it is recorded and how it is recorded. So if a song goes down into the low 20s, I want to hear the low 20s without using a subwoofer. Um, sometimes you have to use subwoofers and I use subwoofers too, so it's not, a, it's not that I'm against subwoofers, it's just when I'm if I'm going to critique a pair of speakers, I want to do it without the subwoofer because once you implement a subwoofer, uh, you create a lot of other things and you're kind of coloring the sound so you can't really review or critique speakers when you use a subwoofer on the side of it. These functions uh, fairly well without a subwoofer. I want to say that overall sound and the lower register on these KG4s are, and I'm going to take some heat for this, is better than the Hurricane, for sure. I like the sound in these better than the sound in the Hurricane. Um, I don't know why, uh, it just is 
uh, what it is. Uh, they're, they're, they are in, these are in fairly good condition. They need to be wiped off. They are a little bit dirty here and there. Uh, I probably have to sand the cabinet and, and re-oil it or redo the, the wood veneer. Um, a couple of uh, dust caps needs to be pulled out. Uh, and that's about it. This one and the one back here and one of the on the other speaker over there uh, has a pushed in dust cap. But he said he had kids, so that's probably why. Um, Design-wise, um, I think the KG4 is a very nice looking speaker. Uh, I like them better than the Hersey's in many ways, both cosmetically and sound-wise. Um, and the fact that they came with the risers helps a lot. You get them up uh, two, three inches, three inches, maybe more, up from the floor, and that helps a little bit. Um, it would have probably been better if they had them if the risers had been angled so they had been angled a little bit backwards so pointing up towards you because you have to sit very low uh, even with the risers um, the crossover is no no hocus pocus there very straightforward crossover okay quality for what you can expect from a pair of speakers this um, in this quality and this price range when they were new um is this one of the better clipsers i have heard um no i have heard the bell i have heard the corner horns cor cornwalls and all that stuff and they are better but it is the better vintage one of the more what can i say the more economic ones and the more value for money speakers I would, if I had a chance to buy a, a mint condition used KG4 and a mint condition used Hersey without thinking about values and, and resale value, but what would engage me when I'm listening to music through the speakers, I would go for the KG4. Not a... I, I don't think the reason, I don't think the tweeter is a big enough reason to to pick the hurry state because what you can do, you can, you can, if you want to, and yes, I know they won't be original anymore, but you can save the, the tweeter horn. You can take this tweeter horn out and you can replace it uh, with another clip horn or electro voice horn or something like that. And, and these will, then they will sound very, very sweet. Uh, Another thing you probably could do to upgrade the sound in these is to recap the crossover to some with some better caps that will do the trick. Um, and I had an idea the other day and when I when I went down to pick them up, I drove about 55 minutes to get them. Um, and I didn't pay much for them. So if I want to sell them, I'm not going to lose any money on it. Um, but I was also thinking instead of having this 12 inch passive radiator back here maybe putting in some old 12 inch Hepner uh, woofer that doesn't demand a lot of volume in the box and maybe see if I could like shield the two front uh, woofers but after I was thinking about it I was like nah why would I go through all this crap and do all this shit because basically I'm probably not going to keep them that long um, they were fun to listen to and I like the sound and this is one of the older vintage clips that I have uh, had a surprising moment with uh, I didn't expect much when I picked them up I just picked them up because I got them cheap that was the only reason why um, and of course I had a point my original reason was they were cheap and I was going to part them out I was going to take out all the drivers the crossovers and part them out take the risers off and sell those and, and keep the cabinet and reuse the cabinet for something else later on. That was my plan, but um, I haven't really decided what I want to do, if I want to keep them or if I want to do the conversion that I said, take out all the drivers and part them out and sell them and put other drivers in, um, or if I want to sell them as whole, as a complete pair. The only thing that is the drawback with it is they're heavy, not the heaviest ones, but they're pretty heavy. And once you get all the packing material and the boxes, 
and the weight goes up and up and up and up and they're fairly big and you know to ship speakers you have to really really pack them good because i have seen a lot of nightmare packing on ebay so it, it would be a big box for each speaker because it had to be sent separately and um, so it would cost a lot of money to ship so selling them as a whole piece on ebay or something like that would probably not be the best way to go you can part them out and sell the parts on ebay that will that will be okay but um so i think for now i'm gonna keep them and um i think that once i get to the point where i have sanded them and refinished them just some some oil just to get some gold just to get some shine back in them because they're kind of like dull looking so just to get the wood vibrant again is what i'm looking for so who knows maybe i'll keep them because i like the sound in them did they wow me no uh, what kind of amplifier did i use well i used two different amplifiers this time one was a receiver an onkyo receiver pretty big one I think it has like 120, 125 watts per channel, maybe 130. And I used a uh, face linear, linear, um, linear, like whatever people call them, uh, face linear uh, amplifier, um, two, uh, face linear 200 series two, um, 120, 125 watts per channel. And I want to say that the, since both amplifiers was in that range, but one was a um, receiver and one was a power amplifier. Um, 120 watts on these was very, very a very good match. I don't think I uh, would have gone any higher um, on the wattage. Maybe 150 would be the stretch to go. But I think 150 is what these will take. And after that, I think you are pushing them too hard. So 150 watts it's is is okay. I run I was running 120, 125, 130 watts this weekend and it was a fairly good match. The um face linear uh 200 series 2 um uh, made these sound better. <laughs> this is crazy. That's an old amp from the 70s. Um made these sound way better than my um, newly acquired Onkyo uh, receiver from maybe seven, eight, ten years back. So um, what kind of amp would I recommend to use on these? Well, beside, if you look away from the wattage and if you run like 75, 100, 120 watts, you're pretty good. You're pretty well off, but um, use a good amplifier uh, because there was there was quite a difference when I used the uh, face linear and uh, compared to the Onkyo. There was a big difference, not only in the bass and the power and all that stuff, but um, the face linear amplifier kind of tamed the the, the tweeter somewhat a little bit. Uh, it, the tweeter sounded harsher and harder with the Onkyo. Uh, and I don't know why that is because, well, may, a lot of people say that face linear has a warm sound, so, um, because they were made to imitate tube amplifiers. But, um, yeah, I mean, if you have a, a good amplifier around 75 to 125 watts, these little babies will wake up and do a good job. Do I recommend them? Well, that depends. If you can get them for the price that I got them, yes. Get them all day long. I think you can go as high as 250, 275, and you're doing a good buy, um, and you won't lose any money in the long run, because most of them are listed for somewhere between 250 and 400. Um, if they sell or not, that's a different story, but that's where they listed most of them. And I want to say that if they are in decent condition, a pair of the KG4s, I say they're, they're worth about 300, 350 bucks. Um, 
But then again, the prices on vintage audio is just going up and up and up every week. So who knows, maybe in a month or two from now, you maybe won't be able to find these on eBay or other places for less than 500. So you never know because today the prices are going up so fast. <clears throat> so my verdict is on a scale from one to 10, I gave the, I gave these and I will give these a six and a half to about a seven in sound. I want to give them an eight in looks and cosmetics because they look good. I like them. Uh, building quality, they are Klipsch quality build. They're solid, they're good. Eight, eight and a half all day long. They could have been built better, but they're fairly good built. So there you have it. Um, is it. Is the KG4 great value for money? Yes, as long as you don't pay over three, 350 bucks. Um, if you're a flipper, you want to be in the $100 range, $150 range, because that way you can probably most likely double your money. But I, I don't know. Um, I'm not big on selling clipses, so I might be wrong, but that's from what I have seen. Um, and I paid for these. I got these, this pair and an extra grill, like I said, uh, and I got it all for a hundred bucks. I think that was a good fair deal, uh, both for the seller and for me as a buyer. And if I want to, I, if I want to get my money back, I could probably sell them for 250, 300 bucks. And I can, I can get them sold for that. Um, the funny part is I looked them up online and one guy sold two of these front woofers uh, sometime back for $82 for just two of these and you know I have four because I have a pair so just there I just get my money back in the front woofers and then of course you have the tweeters you have the risers you have the passive uh, um, radio in the back you have the crossover so I won't lose any money at a hundred bucks and I have the extra grill I could probably get 40 bucks for the extra grill but I'm not sure if that's an avenue or a road that I want to go down so I haven't decided yet if I want to keep them uh, sell them or part them out. I have not decided yet. Uh, if anyone wants to make me an offer, feel free to go to our Facebook page because we have shut off all comments below this video. But I have opened up a Facebook page, a group that um, is linked. I have a link in, down below. You can go there and you make, can make comments on every video because every video that I upload to YouTube is also uploaded on and in that Facebook group. That way we don't have to deal with uh, knuckleheads and basement dwellers. So if you don't want to make a comment and show your identity, well then you're not serious. On Facebook we're all who we are and I like it that way so that's how it is. KG4 I don't give it two thumbs up, but I give it one thumbs up. It is one of the better, smaller, cheaper clips that I have heard, and they're better than Hersey. 